and welcome to this amazing conversation with the amazing Lisa Melnichuk, who is our author, who you've heard me, seen me talking about today on our page. Welcome to everyone in our audience. We've got 11 attendees and thank you for joining us in our webinar. And if you're wondering who that is down there, that's the amazing Veronica Rook. You will know her from all of the amazing books that she's worked with us on um, at, at Surrender Press. We are so grateful for her. But one thing is Lisa and Veronica are a team made in heaven. But before we introduce Veronica, I want us to get to know Lisa a little better. And I'm going to share some beautiful things with you, some little surprises that we've been doing behind the scenes. So Lisa, um, one of the stories I absolutely adore hearing from you is where these beautiful children's books stem from. Ah, uh, that was um, quite a time last year um, through COVID. And I had uh, broken my wrist, my left wrist. And I was also facing the commemoration of the Hola de Mar, which I organise every year here in Perth for our community and also for the West Australian community. Feeling pretty miserable uh, with my, my hand in a splint, just come out of a cast, and it was COVID. And I believed things were so miserable for everybody. We actually had lockdown here, which is quite unusual, as you know, regarding the rest of Australia. So... I thought this is just not a good time to have a very sad event. And each year I try and do something different. I try and teach people something unique and different about the whole of the mod years. Well, I had just run out of puff and I didn't want to really do it. But in the back of my head, I had the story of one of my survivors indelibly etched in my brain and she is actually one of my children's grandmothers uh, she is their paternal grandmother and because I think the link was so personal um, but her story was probably the worst of all of my stories um, I just had this notion of Baba Helen and Chooks and of course through COVID um, I think this was quite common in many places. People were getting uh, little chook pens in their backyards. They were um, having eggs and, and baking and all of those things were occurring through having uh, what we used to have for years in our childhood, chooks in the backyard. And so the story of Baba Helen and her chooks wove into the, the stories of COVID and what was going on with communities. And so it took a life of its own and it just flowed. It was quite interesting. But the story encompasses just everything at the time, family, crisis, um, Lisa has just frozen there for a second, but I'm sure she'll be with us um, in a moment. And so let me just share a little insight into how I got to know Lisa. It evoked oh, so many different passions and, um, and issues everywhere. And this really morphed into this particular book, this first book of Baba Helen and uh, the Chooks. Uh, so that, that was the, the start. It was the rift, it, the wrist, it was COVID. Um, it was the story that I had just not forgotten. It was in my head um, because it was so close to me, I suppose. But again, it was one of my most challenging stories of all of my research. Yeah. And so the origin story is in a book that you um, compiled of mm -hmm. um, these really harrowing stories. And I know that myself mm -hmm. and Veronica have, mm -hmm. have read the book and are just like, wow, can't believe this happened in our world. But for you to, to um, change your mindset or, and pull out um, a beautiful little story out of a really hard, you know, really hard um, story, you know, mm -hmm. this, this story just makes you smile, but also educates. It also educates everyone 
Um, and that actually became quite important because those of us who, who are educators, we're all educators. If we've had children or we've worked in schools or within any realm of education, we know that these children at that age, I mean, zero to four is when everything happens in those little brains. And then four to seven is when they start questioning and thinking about what they are hearing and seeing and learning. And so I knew that the adults could get hold of this information through various channels. Um, we were starting to see information about this Holodomor, this two years of this terrible genocide and famine in Ukraine. But the, the children were at a, a level where they could in fact have some modicum of understanding of what it might be like. And of course, given the COVID crisis, um, it, it was really a good time to introduce in a very soft way, and thankfully with Veronica, the story, the images were, Per, the, the images were just perfect. It was what I imagined my story to look like. Um, and that's, that's actually quite amazing because you might have the language in your head. And for me, it was trying to transpose language that I was writing for adults, uh, quite senior adults in many cases, you know, professors and, and quite senior people who might be looking at this research and then trying to transpose that language and, and the images for the four to seven-year-old uh, age group. We're frozen again. She'll be back in a second. Just give her a second. <laughs> it's worth waiting for. <laughs> The joys of technology. When it works, it's change proof. <laughs> the story takes a life of its own. And that's what happened. So Veronica picked up, as I've said so many times to her and you, Karen, and of course to anybody who sees my book, I just say this person was just the right person to take my words and put them into images for these children. Because in many cases, the story is told through the images and children will tell their own story, essentially, if they can't read or if no one reads it to them. Mm. So that was the perfection for me. And um, also a bit of serendipity came into play whenever, um, you know, wasn't it that you read an article um, mm. and, and then that led you to me? Um, and you couldn't believe I was so, so close. And then we met up and then oh. I was like, I know the illustrator for you. Oh, that was, uh, you know, the universe does work. It doesn't even work in mysterious ways sometimes. <laughs> the universe is alive and well, and certainly is in my world. And my local paper had a half page spread about Serenity Press and yourself, Karen. And when I read through it, and I, I hadn't actually actively been searching for a publisher, I had just really written the basic form of this first book. And then I read that half page about yourself and Serenity Press. And that was it. That's where I knew I needed to go. And of course, everything just fell into place when I met you you need to work with people who resonate with you as a as a human and with your way of thinking and and your your energies and that's actually how it was and then through you um veronica was part of the package um there were other illustrators that i i could have chosen but the, veronica was this this person that just came through so clearly for me so First of all, yourself, and I walked away from our first meeting thinking, man, that's the person I need. Um, and then following from that, it was Veronica. So, mm. yeah, then, the universe is alive and well. Yeah. Well, one thing I adore about you, um, Lisa, is you have this very strong knowing and you just know mm. when you know and and you mm. just honour that. And, yeah. and also 
um, we're all the same values based and it's all connected mm. in that way and and sing yeah. together and we go ups and downs that's the thing that's what publishing books is a journey and so we're all yeah. in it for the long haul which is yeah. which is wonderful um, so I just want to call on the audience. Hello to our attendees. If you have any questions, Felisa, please pop them in the chat box and I will um, ask them for you. Okay, so but I think now what I might do is, Veronica, after we share the pages, we'll have a, a little chat with you. Um, yeah. But I just want to share um, the page that we, the, the, the actual book, if you don't mind. I'm just going to have to go into, here we go. Just keep smiling, everyone. <laughs> it takes a little, a little minute. There we are. Um, so this is Baba's Chucks, and this is our audio book that just went live today. So you, you guys are the first ones to see it. And um, Veronica, probably the same. So um, we'll pop a link in. We we'll pop a link in the, the chat box. But if you click on this, you can hear um, Lisa reading. And so then we go to the next page and click on that. So isn't it beautiful to have it read by the author? I absolutely adore audio flipbooks and so do my kids. And this is something you can do in your iPad or computer or whatever. I'm not going to show you all of the book, but we're going to give you a little insight into these magnificent illustrations and a little insight into the beginning of the story okay so there we are and um like the red the red chucks and even for your um your name <laughs> to, to end in melnichuk we were like wow this is just you know everything just seems so aligned so can you share with us um a little bit about um the story and then if veronica wants to share a bit about the illustrations Sure. Well, the chooks, um, why the red chooks? Because they are a, a common laying chook in, uh, in Ukraine as well. Um, and we talk about that at the, uh, at the back of the book, the, the, the chooks either here or over there. Over here, let's, if I can just quickly um, let you know, um, and this is all in the book, which um, is just so lovely. I can go to the, that page um, if you want. But get up the back. So we're, they're called Poltava clays in Ukraine and the Isle of Browns here in uh, Australia. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted there to be a chook that, you know, both, uh, I'll call Australians an ethnic group as well, so that both ethnic groups could recognise uh, the chook. And they are a very uh, common uh, laying chook. They, they last about four years. So I have a challenge with this uh, series because eventually um, the chooks are going to have to go on a long holiday. And mm. I have to work out, I, I think I've, I've worked out how that very last will play out. Meanwhile, we're going to have a few adventures on the way. But um, so they last about four years as, as laying chooks um, and then uh, they will have to go on a long holiday. Um, You're but... so brave to, to go on that, you know, to create that conversation. It's a very important conversation yeah. to have because- Well, it know... is, yeah. And mm -hmm. do you know, all as you both know, right the way through the book, there are lots of uh, questions that uh, children can be asked um, it was interesting when I uh, attended a pre-primary group and read the story and you have a bit of a chit chat beforehand and, yeah. and ask children, um, you know, what does this word Baba mean? And when you go to different schools, you get a completely different um, event happening, if you can call it that, where in a multicultural uh, school, that word is just not unusual. And when you ask them, once they know that it, it is the word for a grandmother and you ask them, well, what is your special name for, um, for a grandmother? You get a plethora of names. It's quite interesting. And then you can pick that you've got quite a few Eastern Europeans in there. 
Um, it, it's just quite interesting. And then when you get to uh, a different kind of school, in, in this case, it was a Western suburb school, um, the variety of names were just a variation of grandmother. So granny, grandma, um, and it, was, it was just quite interesting going from one end of Perth to the other um, and having this story as the, the main feature of the event with the children. It was just fascinating. Um, and of course, just the whole notion of, you know, do, do chooks actually talk to each other? Um, I, I find it so fascinating to read this story to children because all sorts of issues come out of it. Can, can chooks talk? Um, and so you just get their imaginations going, well, what do you think is happening when they're making those sounds? <laughs> um, and then they make their own sounds. So you you ask them, well, can you talk to each other in a chook voice? Well, I tell you, that is hysterical. <laughs> and they are convinced. <laughs> and the children actually get it. They are listening to some children, you know, doing the bah, 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 and other children responding. And then <laughs> you're saying, well, what are you saying? The kids actually have a story behind it. So it's just incredible. And this is why, Veronica, the, the story, the flipboards that we did, um, mm. are there six of them, mm -hmm. six big poster flipboards. I can share um, them. That Let is just that. This astounding. One That's right. So we get an insight to everything, guys. Yeah. So do you want to share what this is about, Lisa? And then we'll go back to the book. Well, Lisa's frozen for a second. Bye. She'll be back. It's just a pause moment. Mm. So this is a tell your own story of Baba's Chooks. And it's just a nice little. She person. actually looks like that. So yeah. Veronica really nailed the look. She was sent a photograph and there was Baba Helen. Everybody who sees it and knows that woman are just incredulous. And oh, there wow. you've got the four Chooks and they've all got Ukrainian names. And these names actually belong to people um, I know um, and who have some significance uh, to me in my life. It's quite interesting. A couple of them were um, seniors whom I interviewed for my research. They were survivors. Another one is a dear friend. She was um, an opera singer and she sang all the most beautiful pieces either in church, at mass or at any of our events. Uh, and the third one was a friend of this lady, um, Helen, Baba Helen. And there on the right is my mother. So my mother's quite different. She likes to, to dress, she loves colour, and she likes to be a little more modern. Um, and she's always wearing a hat. So if you have seen her at the Seniors Club today, she had had on a red hat. Uh, it keeps her head warm. And um, there she was in her red hat. And of course, this particular story has the magical chook. Her sister was named Sophia, her very dear sister. Sophia was very colourful and there's Sophia the chook. Now, this is actually a real chook. They are this colourful. And um, so I thought, well, this is wonderful because Stavka might have to take her to Baba to have her looked after because she needs to, to do something. And, uh, and she can't care for Sophia. So Sophia joins the chooks in the chook pen with Baba Helen. And that's a, a whole ball game because there's only four laying boxes, aren't there? So what happens to poor old Sophia? So Don't tell them. <laughs> you know, and the, the kids, the stories yeah. that come out of this are just so interesting. And yeah. every child's got a completely different story. Um, the imaginations of these kids, uh, four to seven, the four-year-olds, they are just incredulous. Uh, the seven-year-olds, their language is, is more sophisticated yeah. and therefore their storyline is a little more sophisticated and they will ask specific questions. Um, the younger ones, they, they just believe that chooks like this exist the older ones are a little more discerning and very questioning. And, um, and I've never seen a chook with all of those colours. Um, so, you know, it's up to the teacher or the parent to try and convince this child that, uh, yes, look, it's a good possibility. 
And then, of course, poor old Zafia is faced with, and they're all, all of the chooks are trying to figure out what to do with her um, because there's. So just, just to let everyone know, this is a book, this is a nice little book that goes to schools and into mm. homes so that you can make up your own story. That's so it's like why me. and why is it a magic laying box? But um, the very last image, I think, is just the classic in that particular storyboard um, setup because this is what blows their minds. So Sophia gets to share with the youngest and the smallest chook, obviously. But look at what Sophia's managed to do. And, uh, and of course, the kids all go, you can't have eggs like that. And of course, <laughs> the Ukrainian eggs are very much like that. And that begins a whole story about Ukrainian culture and painted eggs and Look, there's a multicultural event uh, in Northam in September, and one of the ladies in our seniors group will be actually painting Ukrainian Easter eggs. So, you know, it's then convincing children these eggs actually exist. And of course, I whip out my behind me, I don't know if you can see, but I have a, a jar of painted Easter eggs, and that travels with me. And um, and of course, that that's a whole new set of questions. And, and do chooks lay? And of course, some of mine are geese eggs. Um, and it, it's just mind blowing how um, they can come up with these different questions, the learning experience out of these storyboard pictures is really quite unique. Thanks to Veronica. Oh. Um, the images are just perfect uh, the one on the left of Zafia with all the stars around her she really is just a special chook mm. um, I love her aura her aura you can just absolutely see gorgeous it. Mm. yep so, it is the aura um, yeah it is and, and I was just explaining to everyone because you froze for a moment I was just explaining mm. to everyone that this is a teaching tool to mm. encourage yeah. kids to get creative and add their own story to the images mm. which is I was saying ingenious ingenious <laughs> to do that so i commend you and give you all of the accolades for that because it's amazing we're actually live online and we've got some people watching it actually given us subtitles <laughs> which is interesting but um, we've got some people who are saying love the pictures and yeah. somebody else is going oh wow yeah <laughs> so yeah so so, uh, so fear is in book number two yes. um and you know the the stories that uh, I've got book number three uh, in my laptop and book number three is going to talk about, you know, this is really the history of our Ukrainians from the famine years, the Holodomor. It'll happen right through to the present day. And so book number three is, uh, is looking at deciding to emigrate out of Ukraine. Um, and that whole process, children have no idea of what it is. I was talking to some parents today about So just when um, Lisa's a little bit frozen there, um, I'm just, we're sharing the Serenity Press um, designated page. I will pop this link in as soon as we get back to um, uh, they something. needed to discuss something that was uh, really challenging for that person and it was actually moving countries um, so that's part of it's interesting how this all links in so from my story writing today I'm saying look my book number three is actually looking at moving countries emigrating wow. and that word that children will learn what, what is it to emigrate and what about um, all of the historical things like boat people and children who uh, are on these boats and what it might might be like so uh, yeah the, and Zafia she will feature and as will the other four um, chickens um, the adventures of all of them will tell stories. It, it's an historical series. And um, as you know, based on the themes of, of Ukrainians, of their, their ethnicity, their customs, um, their lives, their history, uh, as much as I can 
fill into these children's minds, uh, I will do. Um, I, I find this era now is just so satisfying um, and fascinating. Far better than adults, I have to say. You know, the books on Holodomor, they're, they're not sexy, are they? They're not something that you want to sit and peel through every night, as I have just done with Heavy a reading. book. Heavy reading. Um, you know, it's challenging reading. They're historical works. And the one that's got all the narratives, it takes time to get through those narratives. They're very challenging. So for me now to have this particular um, age group is fascinating. You're um, having so much fun visiting school. It is fun. You use that and word fun them. often, Karen, yeah. and it's the truth. Enjoying. Yeah, it's fun. And, and it would have been very heavy for you to hear those stories and compile them and to write mm. them. Like that would have been very heavy, you know, the mm. origin stories. But to bring this joy out of them yeah. and for kids yeah. to learn and keep the conversation going. Mm. I'm just sharing our page here. Can you see it? So this is a page that we have in Serenity Press that's Lisa's page. But can you tell us a little bit about your, I know that you're wearing Ukrainian um, dress here, aren't you? And, and Veronica's given you some chicks. That's how, how we roll. <laughs> that's lovely. Look, I wear Ukrainian dress wherever I can. This is a yeah. more modern version um, that I'm wearing today. That's a very uh, traditional blouse. We had a photo shoot that particular day with our young Ukrainian uh, dancing group uh, taught by Simone uh, Litvin, uh, who is just the most amazing young woman choreographing work for this young group. And we've got them dancing uh, also online. Yeah, we can show that. We can show a little bit of that as well. It's just down here. And um, so these are the three books. This is book two. Somebody has said that they can't wait for book two to come out. They're just so excited. And then we've got videos here. So this is an interview I did with Lisa for International, yeah, for International Children's Book. I'm holding Friday. a book. It was my gift to them. And, yes. of course, Veronica embellishes it beautifully with um, with my, my four chooks, which I'm eternally <laughs> grateful for. So there yeah. are those little babies. You know, they're Very anything safe. from well, three to, to six. And I think we've got a couple of older boys in there that are much older. Can um, we hear it? Yeah. Just gorgeous little kids. And she's choreographed this. It's the chicken dance. And so it's a, a song in Ukrainian. There she is. She's just amazing. And these children have learned this chicken dance. They're, they're all wearing little chicken wings. Um, they're just so beautiful, these children. Um, and the boys come in and they, I think the little girls actually get quite irritated with the boys um, because um, you know, they, they they're, they're sort of bigger and take up space and and they're all trying to concentrate on their steps and um, and trying to listen to Simone also. Uh, so when you see it running, I, I'm getting a very stilted version. I don't know about everybody else, but um, when you see it running, they're just absolutely gorgeous. So yeah. That's that's just thanks to Simone. She'll, you that's know, whatever I ask her to produce, she just does. Yeah. yeah. And here we are. This is where you purchase your audiobook. So you can find it in this link as well. And this is our event here. We will all be on there tomorrow because um, we'll have the live launch um, in there as well. But Terrific. um can we talk to um Veronica about these illustrations and this this magical bond that you two have? Um, so, Veronica, uh, yes. what is it like to bring Lisa's vision to life? Really, really good. Can you hear me? Is it okay? Yes. Yep. yes, um, yes. It's not my first time, so I have no idea if I'm waffling and I can't. You can't hear me. Um, yeah. With different stories, the important thing is that you have to make sure that the story reflects uh, the illustrations. There's no point in me drawing one style that doesn't look anything like the story. And in this case, it's an Eastern European story. So I had to make sure, if you notice, a lot of the illustrations don't have outlines. And that's very common to that style in Eastern Europe. There's no point someone opens a book and says, this doesn't feel like the right story. So the next person might want a different style. So that's the important thing is really understanding what the author has written and what their story is about. And it might be sometimes you have to try a couple of times. It's all up to the author. 
if the author doesn't feel that's a fit for their story, then you've just got to keep trying. And there's always an answer and there's always a style and it might be different for every person. But um, I, love the, I love the words. The words actually are really, really descriptive. So you can actually have a lot of fun with the drawings. So that's what I love about Lisa's drawings. And this, there's so much information there. That's what we're trying to also remember, that there's a beautiful Ukraine culture. And that's what we're trying to fit in between all the little the stories is all the so the children when they get to the end they go I've learned something not only about chooks but I've learned something about Ukraine culture so you're getting a little bit more so towards the end uh, Lisa come up with the idea of uh, the poems and you've got a little story and then you can actually so you can learn English you can learn Ukrainian and you can learn written Ukrainian. So there's a, a really good exercise at the end of the book that you can do all to do and you can perform for, you know, the children can perform for their parents. So um, that's what I love about these books. And um, and there's more coming in the second one where we learn about Sophia and, and it's also children love to empathise with characters. So it's explaining how a character feels. There's no point in a character being wooden and just being a bit, flat you've got to know a bit more about the character mm -hmm. so that's what we've done and and also with with Lisa one of the descriptions well which the problem I had was it was four brown chooks and I thought right well we can't have four boring brown chooks so I've had to make them even though they are the breed of chook that Lisa wanted they had to have their own personality so they had to be different sizes have different faces different colors different comb sizes different beak shapes but they're all the same, which is what we explore in the second book, isn't it, Lisa? Mm. Yeah. So that's another thing that Lisa's looking at today. So she'll explore all what I've written and what I've created and she'll she'll fine-tune that. So, But it's a matter of taking Lisa's story and then just showing her this is what it looks like. Mm. And then she just fine-tunes and says, this doesn't work, this bit doesn't work. So you can see the closest uh, thing you can to the end product. So I don't mm. like there are any nasty surprises or anything I like to see. So what we're seeing here on the screen is exactly what we saw from the, from the beginning. You plan to how the plages look. So, and you've got that little bits of humor. So that's, that's what, how I like to, that's how I like to work. That's and it's only a very thing. experienced illustrator, I think, who just understands that concept of this being a book about an Eastern European theme is so important. Mm. Um, something that even I didn't think about. So once Veronica makes that um, analogy to you, it actually then puts your head in a particular frame as well. And just simple things like the uh, the language uh, of the birds, you know, how to how to put that in a way that kind of makes sense, like the family meeting everyone. Um, and the, the type that, that she would use to, to illustrate that. Um, and it was just, it was a very interesting process for me, Veronica, the, the backwards. Yeah. Well, oh, it's just a matter of taking everything that Lisa had put in, like in this page, we're seeing that the chooks had to scratch around for pellets and seeds and green weeds. And in this page alone, they learn, okay, what do chooks... That is not my forte. Um, but to see your words be put into um, illustration is actually quite magical. It's, it's wonderful. Veronica, I want to ask you a question. Yes. What's the hardest thing about uh, doing illustrations for my story? Or now that you've done two, for my stories, plural. What's the hardest thing? Yeah, was there it's anything that you thought, oh, my God, how am I going to do this? That's no, not it's not difficult. There, there has been other ones that other clients have, have been really tricky and you've looked at a page and gone, I don't even know what to draw here. But whereas <laughs> yours, what I do is there's a process that makes it actually easier. You read the story and then you go away and leave it. And you go off and you do something else. And what happens is the story is right here and it plays in the back of your head. And you might be doing the dishes. You might be doing the gardening. 
and it's going in the back of your head. So you're actually working at the same time. So by the time I come back to this room, which is my working room, and on the table behind me is all the sketches for the second book. Mm. As soon as I sit down, I know straight away what to draw. Yeah. And um, the images just flow straight away from out of my, my head because you've mm. done that pre-thinking beforehand. Yes. So the trickiest thing is probably to take your, your story and split it into the 32 pages. That's probably yes. the trickiest. You, mm. You're rearranging the words and it's a matter of creating tension. And mm. then you're, you know, you've got to get the people to want to turn the page. Mm. There's no point in presenting all the information mm. when, you know, the kids want to know what's on the next page, what's mm. on the next page. So it's, that's probably the trickiest Mm. Um, but now we've done two books. I know what your characters look like. I can roughly take previous pictures, plonk them together, add new mm. ones, mm. and you can get the images together. And, and you can see straight away if they work or they don't. So it's mm. presenting it to you so you can say, yeah, this works, Veronica. Mm. And you can see mm. the whole book. Another mm. thing um, with publishing is seeing the drawings all in bits and pieces is very hard for you to tell if there's a problem. Mm. Arranging them in... Um, page after page you can actually see if there's any like issues or any little inconsistencies and you mm. spot them and so when you you're reading the book it all flows from mm. beginning to end and ends really beautifully and satisfying as well mm. so you have to have a beautiful satisfying end so it's all tying those bits and pieces um some authors are a bit light on detail you've got so much in there I've got to pick out the bits that are interesting and say, well, I don't have room for everything, but let's mm. pick out the juicy bits and mm. we'll put them together so the kids learn something about chooks and Ukrainian, mm. or Ukrainian mm. culture. So yeah. that's how I work. It's interesting for me to put, you know, I'm, in, I'm used to... So one of the things um, it, about illustrations, isn't it, Veronica, is that um, once you get the concepts pinned down, yes. then it starts to flow. So there's a lot of work in the pre. The pre. Um, the yeah. smaller groups. Um, and look, th this sounds to me like, you know, writing, publishing 101. We, we, <laughs> could, we could run a course here. It's fascinating for me. Um, it's, it's just lovely. So, yeah, thank, thanks for that, Veronica. I actually learned something from you just now myself. So there you go. <laughs> yeah, just watch how a lot of other people put stuff together and you find that uh, there can be some nasty, awful, disappointing things when a book comes together and you, you see things and you go, why didn't we sort of pre-work that out? And that's what I like to do is the pre-working out at mm -hmm. first to get rid of all those little problems so you have some things. I mean, there's some. you're only human, so there's little things that, that, that go through and end up and you go, oops, that's a bit of a little bit of a boo-boo there. And, but you're human, so you're going to make those tiny little errors. So you try to eliminate the empty spaces. So we take full advantage of everything you've put on the page so it's all there. So And then you've got another book to explore, you know, new ideas, which was what we're doing now, the second book. Yeah. And what I love is that Veronica is an ICANN yeah. illustrator. There's yeah. never a problem. There's always no. a solution. No. Yeah. Um, but That's one of the it. things that I love about illustrations and whenever illustrators and authors get together and I can get them together working together, it's, it's watching the process of the words come to life on the page. Mm -hmm. And that's the magic. And yeah. so thank you so much, Veronica, for, mm -hmm. for being that for Lisa. And um, we are both absolutely grateful. And thank you for coming yeah. and chatting to everyone today and giving um, an insight into how that happens on the page. Mm -hmm. Thank you. For, are you there, Veronica? Yeah. yeah. All right, She's awesome. still here. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. We have we have a question for you, Lisa. Um, Lisa, what a mind blowing idea! Sharing our history mm. and culture yeah. with children in such an interesting and child oriented yeah. way. Veronica's illustrations it. do give the chooks character, and that's from Katerina. Mm. Thank you, Katerina. It was really um, quite a, a pointed exercise in uh, in deciding that. There's enough for adults. We really need to, I have always had this idea that education starts with these young children mm -hmm. and I'm an historian. And so there's absolutely no reason why children of a very young age can actually be exposed to, to history. 
Um, there are different cultures that do it often and do it very, very well. We, we have done it uh, briefly, I suppose, we Ukrainians, um, but this particular part of our history, I think because it is so challenging, even for adults, no one has believed that we could in fact produce something that children could read and children could get some uh, soft understanding of this period of, of the history. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it, if it's done carefully and um, in a way that they can understand, um, we need to start teaching them at this young age. Uh, children are sponges. Let's yeah. go from zero to four. They are sponges. Mm. We all know that if we've raised kids or, or taught them. And then that next age range is when they're, they're churning that material over in their brains and making sense of it. And so anything at all we can actually throw at these kids, which we do, except we haven't done it with the whole of the mod, with our Ukrainian uh, history. So, yeah, it's, it's when you're facing COVID, you've got a broken wrist and you're facing to do a commemoration and you just don't want to do it. It's so jolly sad that the children's book comes out. So here we go. And, yeah, hopefully there'll be a, a series and... Um, and we will go through uh, some interesting times for Ukrainians um, through the eyes of, of the Chooks and Baba Helen and Baba Stavka will feature, but there'll be other family members that will come to the fore. There are grandchildren and so on and so forth. And, and there are um, neighbours and people they meet. And there's an interesting character that's coming up in, I think, book, book four, um, that you here in Western Australia, we will all just smile about. Um, so, so that's that's coming up. And if you can just think in your your minds, the colours of one of our football teams here obviously coincides with the colours of the Ukrainian yeah. flag. Yeah. So that in itself evokes all sorts of ideas <laughs> to me. So that's about book four. Um, yeah, we, so, we love getting an insight into your mind and well, how the story is, grew, you know, you know, it's all it's all there. Um, and that's just little tasters. And it's going to be Veronica who will come up with some interesting ideas. I'll, I won't allude to it now, but when I tell her, she'll know. <laughs> we have yeah. some comments here. So Simone says, my sons can't wait for the magic eggs and Sophia. Um, and Simone also says, I really enjoyed hearing about Veronica's process mm. and um, Aricia, is that right? Aricia, yes. Aricia says, congratulations on the book, Lisa, FYI. There you go. Thank you. I've Thank shared you. the link in there. And um, Christiana says, amazing initiative, beautiful book. And um, we have um, a link in there to that, to Lisa's page on Serenity Press for you to go and find. That'll be the link where we, we pop this, we pop any interviews that Lisa's doing. So just always check in there. When the second book um, goes live for pre-sales, it'll be in there as well. So yeah, you find everything in there. So um, I have really enjoyed this conversation, um, Lisa, and I commend you on the conversation that you are generating um, because as a parent, reading this with my Moments children. Moments in time, but this was one of uh, the most challenging periods of, of life for Ukrainians. Um, but Ukraine has always uh, sought independence. And this year is the 30th anniversary of Ukraine's independence uh, from oh. communism, from the Soviet Union. So, you know, this is why the Vishavanka, the Ukrainian embroidery, um, uh, some of us here, um, we wear it all the time when we've got events on because this year is just so special. 30 years of independence. Um, and to the Ukrainians uh, watching, um, I send out all my love and my greetings. And I know you're all preparing for different events this year. We've had a major one cancelled in Canberra, which is um, awfully disappointing, but that, that's COVID. Um, but we're all um, in our hearts and at different events, just celebrating our independence and just hoping that the country comes through you know, we've, we've sort of struggled through COVID in a very minor way. Uh, it's 
spawned these books <laughs> mm -hmm. and I'm sure it spawned a lot of amazing other things um, but uh, yeah it's it's I guess my contribution to to our Ukrainian culture and uh, and our history and it's it's time our children picked up the mantle so these little ones will be our future absolutely amazing and wonderful Michael says thank you it was a lovely presentation Thank so you, Michael. Thank you. leave it at that. But thank you so much um, for sharing this with us. Like the, this, this series of books um, from the moment you opened your mouth and talked about them, I got excited about it. And <laughs> I'm, it, it's amazing to share it and, you know, share the story of Ukrainian um, history um, through, the, through, the, through a children's book. The adults learn as much as the children, but it generates a conversation. And do you know what else it generates? Gratitude. Yes. And um, my kids yeah. are, are very yes. grateful for where they are. So it gives mm. them an insight yes. to, you know, so they feel more grateful. So I think there's so much goodness that comes out of these books. So I commend you for that. And thank you so much, Lisa. My pleasure. It, it has been my pleasure to share in this way. We've been waiting to do a live um, book launch and that was difficult. And the webinar is just fantastic because we can keep a record of it. I think it's wonderful. And for me to then have both of you as well, um, that's been my joyful thing as well. I want people to know who I work with in doing this. Karen brings it all for all of our, all of your authors. You bring our yeah. world uh, together. Yeah. And Veronica is in there as, as our one thing I want to share with you on September 4th at the museum in Perth, we are hosting a big children's event, which of course Lisa will be a special guest and so will Veronica. So if you are in Perth, Western Australia and our freedoms are the same that we have now, the event will be um, will be at the museum. So please come and join us and hear from Lisa there and even get to meet and elbow hello people <laughs> um, it would be great to see you there and to have your support and we actually have the amazing um my little bookshop they're coming with their beautiful van there to sell books for us on the day so it's going to be an exciting event you get to meet lots of serenity press children's book authors so come and join the fun but lisa is there anything else you want to sh share with anyone before we finish off Oh, look, I want to shout out to all of our Ukrainian educators. I know that uh, some are here, Arisia Stefan and uh, all of the teachers with whom she works. Obviously, Simone Litvinci had come in with, with her thanks. Um, to all of the Ukrainian, just most wonderful educators that work with our children, um, many of them are volunteers, but the work they do keeps this culture moving, growing, and our children get to know and understand who these people are, who we are, uh, who their parents are, grandparents perhaps that they've never met, but through these stories they, they learn the kind of people that they've evolved from, and that's just really important. But it teaches all ethnic groups the same story this is the ukrainian version of many other versions of ethnic stories it's fascinating and that's what's wonderful when you take the book into a school and it's a multicultural group of kids that's fantastic <laughs> yeah it's so special mm. Oh, Lisa, a joy, an absolute pleasure. And there'll be many Thank more you. opportunities because we'll be jumping on whenever um, Baba's Magic Trick is to have mm. a conversation and share that beautiful book. But for now, guys, um, you can jump in Serenity Press and grab your copy. And um, we'll be dispatching them out now shortly. Don't forget to watch out for tomorrow for the live Kindle link so you can get this book to number one. And huge congratulations to you, Lisa, and to you, Veronica, on such an amazing project. And the energy around it is just so amazing. But thank you. Thank and you. Thank you to everyone for joining us. Thank you to all the attendees and for your questions. Thank you. Wonderful. And for everyone watching on Facebook, thank you. And we'll see you again. Bye for now.